Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's coffee chat. Mm. Oh, well, I am so excited about today's video. It's been fantastic getting prepared to share with you what I wanted to share with you today. As you can see, it's we're fully into the holiday season. I've got my red on, we've got the beautiful poinsettia happening. And I want to let you know that today is going to be my last video of the year. I'm gonna be taking a little bit of time off over the holidays. So today I'm gonna to be doing a bit of a year in review type of theme, all related to recipes. So today I just wanted to give you that little heads up that today will be the last video of the season. But if this is the first time you've joined us, welcome. And even if you've been here before, I want to encourage you to click the little subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you're always invited. You receive the invitation to come on over, spend a little bit of time with me over a cup of coffee in my kitchen where we chat about all things food and nutrition nutrition tips, I bust myths, I share favorite things that I'm loving in the grocery store, and also cookbook reviews. So click the little subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you never miss a video. Usually I post once a week, but as I said, heading into the holidays, gonna take a couple of weeks off. Okay, so year review recipes. What I started doing in August was cookbook reviews. And I really did that for one, one key reason. And that's that people always tell me they need recipes. Oh my God, I need recipes. I'm stuck in a rut. I want to eat healthier. What the heck do I make? And so, you know, the answer is cookbooks. Cookbooks have amazing recipes, but you know what? You go into a bookstore, you start clicking over on Amazon, you even go to your public library and wow, it is totally overwhelming. There are so many cookbooks and there's nothing worse than getting a cookbook and then looking through it and realizing, ah, oh, there's nothing I want to make in here. So I started doing the cookbook reviews so that you would know with these different cookbooks, if it was a match for you, if it was something worth getting. Because what I recommend as a sustainable way to get out of a rut is to try one new recipe a week. I find that's doable because if you try to do what I've been doing <laughs> to reviewing these cookbooks, which is making a whole lot of recipes all at once, you're going to exhaust yourself and you're going to fall off that wagon again. So instead of that, what I recommend is trying one single recipe a week, a new one. And you know what, even if you miss a few weeks, that means that in a year, you're gonna be trying like 40, 45, 50 new recipes. I mean, rut, stuck in a rut, what rut? You're making tons of different things, tons of variety going on. And so that's why I started doing the cookbook reviews to give you a little direction of where the heck to even start when we look at that overwhelming situation of all the different cookbooks in a bookstore. And so I reviewed a number of different cookbooks this year and hey, a great side effect that I had for doing this for you is that I had some absolutely delicious healthy foods this year. Oh my goodness, blew my mind. Things that I now make on the regular and oh, super, super enjoying. So that's what I wanted to share with you is my little year in review. These are my top six new recipes, healthy, delicious foods that I tried this year. And I know six is a bit of a funny number, but that's honestly, like when I was looking at like the top things, the things that really rose to the top, it happened to be six. And so what, I'm not gonna share with you one, so just so I could have a nice easy five, no way. I'm here in the spirit of sharing, so hey, going to do an unusual six because that's just the way the year rolled, that there were six standout recipes, delicious, healthy things that I tried this year that I wanted to share with you or some little inspiration today. And so the first one, first couple recipes are from this one, Eat More Plants by Desiree Nielsen, dietitian. And I have to say that this cookbook has really become one of my go-to cookbooks. And I love that. You know, there's some cookbooks that you might, you know, try the odd recipe from, and then there's some that, you know, I did a big grocery store on the weekend and I was like, okay, what do I want to make with these, with these ingredients? And this is the one of the cookbooks that I just went to as a go-to now. And so there were two things from this cookbook that, oh, just blew my mind stand out. 
Now, one was an amazing summer dish. Like when the weather is hot, this is what I want to eat all day long. Like this just was like, oh, my taste buds in one recipe. And that was the Vietnamese cucumber salad with ginger and mint. Look at that one. Oh, oh my goodness. So delicious. It's vibrant. It's palate cleansing. It's refreshing. It's cooling. And obviously it's vegetables. So delicious and super, super easy. Very few ingredients in this one, but they really just sing together. And it's one of those like synergistic effect things. So thank you for that one. And if you love kind of Thai, Vietnamese, those kind of flavors with that little bit of acid, a little bit of heat going on, you will love that recipe. Now, the other recipe that I have been making a ton, particularly in this winter season, is the second standout recipe from this cookbook that just, like, I have to say, like blew my mind when I tried this. And I tried it because it was one of those recipes where I was like, what? What? I mean, I do recipe development. I love to cook. And so usually when I read a recipe, I can get like a mental picture of what it's going to taste like. Not the case with this one. This one I had to try because it sounded so weird. And yet it was including many of many of my favorite ingredients. So I was like, okay, this I have to try. And I have to admit, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, what? And oh my gosh, so glad that I did. It is a favorite. It's a go-to. As I said, I've been having it all holiday season long. And that's the cardamom rose beet latte. Let me say that again. A cardamom rose beet latte. Like, yes, you're putting beets in your latte. And it's amazing. So here, she's got a couple of recipes here. I'm talking specifically to this beautiful one down the bottom. Now I admit I put way more beet in mine and so mine is like a vibrant pink. I've posted a couple of photos of that on my social media on Instagram, Facebook. So if you wanna take a peek of what mine looks like with a lot of beet in there, that's what mine, you can see a picture of it, but oh, wow. Delicious, refreshing when you're, you know, wanting something warm and kind of creamy to drink, but you know, you're kind of over caffeinated or you just don't want any more coffee, eh, decaf, you know, whatever, but you don't want a ton of sugar, like a, you know, a pumpkin spice latte or I don't know, chocolate mint mocha or peppermint mint mocha or whatever the heck is holiday drinks are going on, but you still want something different. This is amazing. And you're also getting some vegetables in there and some antioxidant power from those beets. So beautiful, beautiful choice. So absolutely amazing book, Eat More Plants, go-to go book, and two amazing like top six recipes from this one. Another cookbook that I tried this year that also has two standout recipes was this one, This Kitchen is for Dancing by Carlene Karst, another fellow British Columbian. And ah, again, this cookbook has become my other go-to cookbook this year. So glad that I reviewed both of these cookbooks because they're my absolute go-tos. And I love Carlene because again, very vegetable-centric recipes, um, healthy ones, but also pretty practical and, and doable recipes, particularly if you do have a blender. So do you, you do need to have that food processor or blender for this cookbook, but I do, and so it's not a problem. And a couple of amazing recipe standouts. So the first one was this vegan cream of mushroom soup. Okay, I get obviously it's not actual cream because it's vegan, but it's amazing. It has that creaminess. And to tell the truth, it was the, I love a cream of mushroom soup, and it was the best one I've ever had. And there isn't even any cream in there. Yeah, amazing. So it's, it's vegan and it's delicious. Want to show you a little picture there, but uh, it's, it's got coconut in there. It's got some arrowroot flour, but it didn't taste coconutty. It just tasted like all mushroom, which is what I want a mushroom soup to taste like. So that is an absolute go-to. Blew my mind that I could have such a creamy, such a mushroomy, like the best mushroom soup I've ever had that didn't actually have any cream in it. And that it involved coconut, but it did not taste coconutty because that was what I was a little concerned about because I love coconut, but not in my mushroom soup. <laughs> And yet this had that in there. It did not taste coconutty. It just tasted like the best mushroom soup I've ever had. Delicious. And then a second 
amazing recipe. Again, one of the top things I've ever tasted. This and yeah, rose up to the top of this list for what the different recipes that I tested this year, tasted this year, was the sunflower seed Alfredo sauce. I mean, I love a creamy pasta. It's a comfort food for me, but obviously an Alfredo is not the healthiest thing in the world. So I'm all for healthy versions of that. And you know what? I'm a big believer in eating a wide variety of nuts and seeds, including nuts and seeds every day and eating a variety of that. And sunflower seeds are not one that are one of my go-tos. Like I always have some in the fridge, but they kind of last longer than the others. And so when I saw a creamy Alfredo sauce pasta, again, one of my childhood favorites, comfort foods made from ses uh, sesame seeds, I had to give this one a try. And oh, it had everything I wanted in there, everything I wanted, the creaminess, the unctuousness, there's a ton of nutritional yeast in here, and that's what gives it that kind of umami, kind of cheesy, dairy type of flavor, but without any dairy in there. So fantastic plant-based recipe. Does not make you wish that you were having dairy. I had all the creaminess, everything that I wanted, and a brand new way to include sunflower seeds, which, as I said, is a seed or a nut that I often don't use. Also a great one if you are looking for plant-based meals, if you're looking for dairy-free meals and still needing something perhaps nut-free as well, right? Maybe you've got a little kiddo that you want to be sending things to school with. Um, this is a great recipe because it has the seed. And so some places you need to provide no nuts or seeds and some places our seeds are allowed but are nut-free. So always double check your facility, your instant, their place, you know, the building that you're sending your little one to, but this, was a standout recipe regardless top six so absolutely two to the top six again from this cookbook by carlene Kars. this kitchen is for dancing and so glad that i reviewed it because it's become an absolute go-to cookbook for me the next standout recipe that i tried was from this one fresh food full hearts by jillian harris and Tori Wessler, again, two British Columbian women here. And uh, yeah, I reviewed this cookbook just earlier in the month. And what I found, and you heard, if you watched that video, you heard me gushing about it. So probably not a surprise that this recipe made my top six of the year. But that was the lentil shepherd's pie. And I've tried many different lentil shepherd's pie recipes. I always enjoy them, but this one, like, again blew my mind particularly it was the mashed potatoes <laughs> i mean come on let's admit it who else eats a shepherd's pie pretty much for the mashed potatoes and this one had mashed potatoes and mashed yams and again a vegan substitute they used uh, a cashew cream instead of dairy in there oh my goodness the richest, most satisfying, creamy mashed potatoes, mashed jams that I've ever had. Like I am using that tip for when I'm just making mashed potatoes or mashed jams in the future. Never mind when I'm doing the lentil, like doing a, a shepherd's pie. Ah, such an amazing tip. Blew my mind. Absolutely like just stand out recipe for this year. I mean, this makes a big dish and I only served it to myself and my sweetheart one day and I ate all the rest of those leftovers and it was one of those situations. I didn't even put any in the freezer. I was super happy to eat that <laughs> dish twice a day for a few days in a row because it was delicious. So absolutely loved it, standout recipe. And so if you're looking for other family style dishes that maybe take a little more time but are delicious and especially if you are looking to be more plant-based great cookbook highly recommend it and yeah that that lentil shepherd's pie mm, so delicious top recipe top six recipe for sure and then i have to also now it's a little self-serving i know i know but i have to say that as you know or if you're new here, you may not know that I wrote a cookbook this year. And so I developed a whole bunch of new recipes for that. And uh, yeah, I have to say one of the recipes that I created 
stand out delicious. And I even I even wrote it in the cookbook that uh, shh, this is my favorite recipe of the whole cookbook. <laughs> But it really, really is a standout one. And so this is my cookbook, the Easy Sugar Detox Cookbook. And the recipe that is my favorite, my standout of the year is the olive oil poached salmon with orange and fennel. Oh my goodness. Just so decadent, so rich, and like just so moist. And the fennel and the orange harmonize so well, go so well with a beautiful salmon. I love salmon. You do not have to do a whole lot of gussying up of salmon. I love the way it tastes on its own. And here with the citrus, with the fennel, those flavors just sing all together in this elegant, super, I mean, it couldn't be easier, super, super easy recipe, and yet so elegant, so delicious. Now, I don't have a photo. My publisher did not do a ton of photos for the cookbook, so I don't have a photo of this recipe to show you. But trust me, delicious one. Really let salmon sing for itself, but also pairing just in beautiful harmony with the other ingredients. And so that rounds out my top six recipes of the year. Amazing year, amazing recipes. So happy that I launched on the <laughs> huge task of doing one cookbook review a month. I'm take all of those cookbooks to the test. I am cooking up a storm, testing them, testing them, because I want to be able to honestly let you know whether the cookbooks are worth purchasing or not. I purchased all of them on my own. None of this is sponsored in any way. I will, if you want to check out the fulsome reviews of those cookbooks, I will include links to those videos below. So you can see, you know, is that a cookbook? Okay, that one recipe sounds delicious, but is the cookbook worth buying for me? Is it a match? Definitely take a peek at the video reviews there. If you want to do some shopping to head out and purchase those, I'll include a link below to my website where I've got them all lined up and you can easily just click through to Amazon. I do have, those are an affiliate links for me, so I make a little bit when you shop through my website there. You can also, of course, pop down to your local bookstore and get them from there. Ah, so that's my year in review, my top six recipes. It's been a delicious year. I hope you've had a delicious year. If you like today's video, please let me know. Click the little thumbs up button and have a happy holidays. Have a happy, happy holidays and I will see you in the next decade.